how's the offseason been? What specifically have you been working on? And how's the field being three-ish weeks away? Yeah, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm excited to go, and uh, so, so are Ashland and Brooks. But um, it's been a productive offseason. Uh, obviously, a lot of family time. Uh, Brooks is walking, so that's, uh, that's a new chapter in our life. But, um, you know, baseball side of things, it's been a lot of uh, focus on, uh, you know, defensive stuff, um, you know, making sure I'm, I'm ready to go there. And then, uh, you know, offensively, just keep working on what I was working the, the last few weeks of the season. So, um, you know, really excited to get going. What in particular defensively? Yeah, um, uh, just a lot of uh, first step stuff. You know, I, I always felt like my, my first step was uh, you know, a little late, so just kind of working on that and making sure that uh, I'm, I'm on time and, and you know not late getting to the ball. So um, that, that's been the, the main focus. I've been taking ground balls since November, so um, you know I've been putting a lot of work at. What stood out specifically when you look back at the two months you were with the Marlins after the trade? What specifically stood out at the plate, and how do you try to build on that going into the season? Yeah, yeah, you know, I think uh, the numbers when I came over uh, versus the end of the season kind of told the story there. You know, I hit hit over 300 when I was here, so um, you know, obviously keep keeping that up, but also uh, not losing any power numbers in, in that regard. So. Uh, obviously, it's a fine line, but uh, just kind of working on uh, everything that Mabes and Mabes and I were working on over the season. Yeah, with Mabry, uh, how much have you talked with him this offseason now? That, especially now that he's going to be the main guy taking over for Brian. Yeah, talk uh, probably twice a week. Um, you know, just sending him videos, making sure uh, you know he's liking what he's seeing. So uh, it's been a really good uh, communication chain there. And then uh, you know, Bill Miller uh, played at my alma mater at Missouri State, so uh, you know, another Missouri State bear on the staff is always a good thing. Has the team mentioned any possibility of playing a little bit of first base at any time this year at all, or some DHM as well? Um, not, not really. I mean, obviously, I think we'll get more of a, a scope when we get to spring training, and uh, you know, we're all in the same building together. Uh, you know, right now, I think Skip's like, "Hey, enjoy the family time before we get going again." So that's uh, that's been the focus. You had some injuries in the past. How did you feel your body held up last year? It, I felt like it held up really well. Um, you know, obviously I had that weird uh, quad thing at the end of the season, uh, but thankfully it was, it was a minor thing. Didn't really feel it at all uh, over the off season. And, and um, you know, I think I played like 140 uh, out of 162 possible last year. So um, you know, if I can do that, hopefully get up to uh, 150, 155. But um, yeah, it, it felt good. Um, it's, a, it's obviously uh, tough waters to navigate when you're playing 162 games, but uh, you know I felt like I did, I did a pretty good job of that. Jake, how much have you talked with Peter Bendix throughout the offseason, just what his vision is as he takes over? Yeah, I met him uh, at, at the winter meetings. Uh, you know, I had an awesome opportunity to talk with him for a while there. So um, yeah, we're, we're really excited to get going, and uh, you know, obviously coming from a great organization with Tampa Bay, um, you know, I think he's got a good good plan in place, and um, you know, I'm excited to see where it goes. And obviously, there's still time to between now spring training starts. He's but where, what's your vibe about where the team is at this point as it's constructed, and where you what gives you optimism that you guys will be able to build off what you guys did last year? Yeah, I mean, we're returning a lot of guys, so, um, you know, it's a, it's a really good clubhouse in there, and, um, you know, I think Skip's built a really good culture um, in that clubhouse that, you know, it doesn't matter uh, who's in the clubhouse. I think we're going to all, all buy into that culture and, uh, you know, do what we did and play with resilience, you know, um, not, not let anything get us out. And then, I mean, you got to look at our pitching staff. I think it's one of the best pitching staffs in the league. So, um, you know, top to bottom in, in the rotation, obviously, we're going to be missing Sandy. Um, you know, he, he's our guy, but, um, you know, I feel like we got some guys that can step up in um, his role and, uh, you know, go from there. Jake, what's so, the best way to describe to people how you were able to hit for average while not sacrificing power? Yeah, I, I think for me, it's just uh, more of a mindset thing. It's not, uh, not trying to do too much. I think it was really easy. Uh, for me to uh, kind of see, hey, I'm at 20 home runs, let's try and do a little more. Um, and, you know, once I got here, I felt like I could kind of take a deep breath and, uh, you know, just focus on the player I am and uh, the player I was in college. And so, um, you know, getting that that uh, thought process at the plate is uh, definitely freeing. Should Soler not return? How do you avoid the pressure kind of as a middle of the order back to not try to do too much with his absence? Yeah, I think uh, last year we, we had some injuries uh, during those two months I was here. And, um, you know, I think uh, we were in Washington, and um, I think Solaire was hurt during that, that series. And so, um, you know, obviously they, they pitch you a little different when you don't have Solaire, who's, uh, you know, has the power he does behind you. But, um, you know, it's just trying to go up there and not trying to do too much. I think that's, uh, that, that's the thing. You know, you're not trying to hit a, a five run home run. Just, uh, you know, just be your player yourself. And, uh, if you got to take a walk, you got to take a walk.
big fan fest out here tomorrow. What's exciting about the 2024 Marlins? Yeah, we're, we're really excited to see all of our fans. Um, you know, I, I think you got a lot of good guys in that clubhouse, a lot of uh, great people um, and great players, you know, and I think uh, what we built uh, last year, you know, I think we, we want to continue that and we got a taste of the postseason and didn't do it we wanted it to, you know, we felt like we could have gone all the way. Um, and so uh, I think that, that leaves a bad taste in our mouth, mouth which is a good thing, you know, it motivates us for this year. Those you were taking, they were at your own no, no, we're. I've, I've been in Nashville, um, so yeah, just working, working with a couple guys around the league, um, and you know, getting some good work with them. So um, we'll, yeah, we'll see. Who are some of those guys? Uh, Vinny Pascantino, um, Brandon Lau with the Rays, um, Ryan Noto with the Athletics. So um, you know, we have a good group of guys. Both uh, motivate each other for uh, offensive and defensive purposes.